better. So the subject for today is Hefker. And we're going to take a look at the Mishnah on Daf Mem Gimel, here in the Durham. And the Mishnah records a machlokas between the Tanakama and Rabbi Yossi. What's exactly the case? A person is mudar hanom vichavero. So let's say Shimon cannot get any hano from Reuven. Is there a way of, of circumventing this Easter? And the Tanakama says the following, that meniach al hasela o al hagader, that if he, the Madir takes, let's say, food that he wants to feed the Mudar, that's Shimon, and he places it on a stone, on a, on a boulder, or on top of a fence, the Omer, he declares, Harei hein mufkarin, l'chol mishiyachpots. It's hefker for anyone who wants to come and take it. Vahala, according to the Tanakama, the Mudar, notel vi ochel. He's allowed to take it and eat it. In other words, he's not getting hano from Ruvain because Ruvain made it hefker for everybody. So there was no direct mice of being Mahana Shimon. Ruvain is not being Mahana Shimon, he's just making it hefker. Shimon, on, from his part, is taking the Muslim from hefker. He's not taking it from, from Ruvain. Rabbi Yossi Oser. <laughs> Rabbi Yossi says this is also. So we don't know up front what's the reason, what's the logic of Rabbi Yossi. After all, the logic of the Rabbanim seems to be very um, very convincing, very persuasive, because it was Hefker, and there's no direct hakna from Ruvein the Madir to Shimon Amudar. So the Shimon Amudar is not getting any benefit directly from the Madir. And why does Rabbi Yossi say it's also? And here we have machlokes between Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish. So we'll start with Rabbi Yochanan. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, my time with Rabbi Yossi, because sova hefke ke matana. Ma matana adi asya mishus no sein lishus mekabel. Af hefke adi asi lishus hazoche. Zoche. It means the following. That according to Rabbi Yochanan's interpretation of Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi holds that Hefker is like Matana. Just like in the case of Matana, Ruvain is machna something to Shimon, and it's only when Shimon is Zoha and makes a Kenyan and acquires ownership, only then does the object leave the Rishus and the Bailus of Ruvain the Machna. So too, according to Rabbi Yossi and Hefker, the object doesn't leave the bilus of Ruvain, who is Mafkirin, until it enters into Shimon's Rishus, which means that Shimon made a Kenyan on the object. So while the object is in this middle state, after the Maisa Hefker on the part of Ruvain, but before Shimon made a Kenyan on it, it's still considered in the Rishus of the Mafkir, of the original owner. It hasn't yet left his Rishus. It only leaves his Rishus the moment that the Zoha, in this case Shimon, acquires ownership on it. So basically, according to Rabbi Yossi, the way Rabbi Yochanan understands it, the object, in this case the Mozon, goes directly from the Rishus of the Madir of Ruvain into the Rishus of Shimon, the Muda, when Shimon makes the Kenyan. Because until Shimon makes the Kenyan, the object, the Mozon, is still in the Rishus of Ruvain the Bailan, the Mafkir. It only leaves the Rishus of the Mafkir the moment that Shimon is Zoha in it. So Shimon really is Zoha directly from the Madir, from Ruvain. And therefore it's awesome. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit to see the uh, alternative Shita of Reish Lakish. Give me a second here. So Rish Lakish is here on Daf Mem Dalin Omen Aleph. Mem Dalin Omen Aleph is a very short uh, Daf. And about halfway through the Daf, we have Rish Lakish. Now Rish Lakish is going to change the whole perspective, the whole understanding of Rabbi Yossi. 
and he's going to claim that Rabbi Yossi is working with what we call a Gzera de Rabbana. He's not dealing with the Doraisa. And all this has to do with a case which is quoted here on Daf Memdal and Omid Beis, a Brisa of Meiser. The halacha is that Hefker is potem in a And the Brisa says that Hamafker is karmo, a person was mafkir his vineyard, Ulashachar, and the very next morning, Omad Ubitsaro. He went ahead and he harvested his own karen. So the question now is, would he be chayv maser in this case? Since Hefker is part of maser, then at one moment in time, this was Hefker. Even though he himself, the Bailin, was Zochem and a Hefker, but before doing so, before he was Mashkin Baboker, Omad Bitsaro, it was Hefker. Therefore, he is Potim and Amase. And this works out well according to, according to the Shita of the Chachamim. Because the Shita of the Chachamim is that the moment that you Mafker something, it leaves your Rishos. We don't have to wait until someone is Zoha. And therefore, when he himself wakes up the next morning and he cuts down his. Um, his uh, grapes, he is being Zochim in a Hefkin. And therefore, he's Potim in a Masa. That makes a lot of sense. The question is, what would Rabbi Yossi say in such a case? According to Rabbi Yochanan, who learns that Rabbi Yossi is dealing with the Doraisa Halacha, and it's not Hefkir to leave the Rishus of the Mafkir until someone else is Zochim in it, then basically, when he cuts down his own Kerem, he is being choserbo. He's rejecting his original hefker, which he's allowed to do until someone else is zocha, and therefore it's not hefker, and that's a doraiz halach. So Rabbi Yossi would therefore argue in the case of a mafkir's karmo l'shachar omad ubitzaro that he be chayev in maser according to Rabbi Yossi. Well, why does it make it not hefker? Because he, Rabbi Yossi is saying that, that you can have Hefker, but even while it's Hefker, it still is Birshus Bailey. Correct. So, so it the never poor Meister. Hefker. No, it's not. It's, Rabbi Yossi is saying that there is no such thing as Hefker. He's just saying that even while the item is Hefker, the original Bailey is still. Hefker means I'm giving you okay. the ability to be so. And that's but a, that, if I myself take it, then I never would. But who said, who said that's not enough for the poor Meister? But Sigmar is assuming now that if you yourself decide to keep it for yourself, then it never left your Rishus, because it's got to go out of your Rishus into someone else's Rishus before, before the Hefker is Cha. So according to Rabbi Yochanan, in Rabbi Yossi, you could be Choser, Bo, you could decide to reject your Maisa Hefker until someone else is Zoha. If you yourself take it, then that's considered a Chazor bin a Hefker. So it never really left your Rishus. So you can have That's both. going to be okay. both. It never left your shows, but it still was hefker. Meaning mm-hmm. for 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 No, it sounds uh, like Rabbi You want to say a new chiddush in Well, right, right, I think Rashi has his pshat, and what's the, what's the the, the Tormeiser by for hefker? Because at, at a certain point in time, right, the reason we give true and meiser is for those for those six hours before he changed his mind, the levy had just had the levy come and he had just as much rights as anyone else did. That could be enough for the Tormeiser meaning. Even, uh, even within Rabbi Yossi. So you don't need a Chal Hashem Hefker, you say? No, Rabbi Yossi doesn't say there's no such thing as Hefker. He's saying that that while it's Hefker, in that time period before the new Bailin acquire it, there's still there's never a time there's no Bailin. But there's still going to be a time period where there is a Bailin, and, and, there's, and it's Hefker. Hefker is rich trust for anyone else to come and take it. And Rabbi Yossi doesn't say that someone isn't allowed to come and take it. They, it's Hefker, they can come and take it. Right. But the question is, you're saying that even if it didn't leave your Rishus, it still might be Hefker. It, it is Hefker. I mean, according to Rabbi Yossi, that, that's what Hefker is. Are you kind of saying the same thing? Because you're giving someone the ability to take it. So it's still on your Rishus, and, but you're giving someone the ability to take it. That's what we were saying before. Right. right. He- if, if you Hefker is nothing, no- according to Rabbi Yossi, and it would like a, an Amafker, according to Rabbi Yossi, and then it hurts someone else, right? Uh, well, so that was my next question about right. Zikin. So, yeah, that, that, um, according to Rabbi Yossi, I don't know, my, uh, I'm storing a dangerous chemical in a blue eye. Not a dangerous chemical. Like, I'm, so, I'm, right, because it hurt someone. 
the thing, okay. So did Rabbi Yossi say I'm still like um, okay, assuming that there was like a right. to Allah and everything, right? Because yeah. the Gemara is operating with the premise according to Rabbi Yochanan's interpretation that Rabbi Yossi holds that Hefker still belongs to you. Still belongs to you. It never lose. It, it never left you bias. No, but, then, but even Rabbanu until is, someone else is zochin. Yeah. So, so you're giving rishus to someone else to be zochin, but until that point takes place, it never left your rishus. And if it never left your shoes, it's not really hefker. The hefker is chal, so to speak, simultaneously with the with the moment that someone else is zochin. But, oh, but in the oh, meantime, by, by it's still in your shoes. In Rabbi Yossi, in Rabbi Yossi. But I, I think I, the, the Gemara says shnei dvarim ein ab yeshus mshalada. Meaning, even if it's not in your shoes, the Gemara says you're still chayav for for, for nizikin. Right? Shnei dvarim ein ab yeshus mshalada. No, you can't say according to Rabban, I make something hefker and then it can damage the world and I'm not chayav. Of course, oh, I'm, of course, I'm chayv even if I'm not. Yeah, I mean, even you don't need to hold like Rabbi Yossi to say they're going to be chayv in the Ezekiel. I'm off for a car, and it's not Matsui. Is this gonna... door open, by the way? It, it can't <laughs> open. How are you? Um, the second question I had is that we we're talking about Meiser. Is there a reason to describe the? Um, Chiv Meitzer instead of Chiv um, Trumos, or do they just go together? In other words, like, is there a reason that we take Truma and Meitzer? Okay. Yeah, I think it's a package deal. Okay, Rabosa, you have this in your phone, and this is called Hefkir Kematana, and it's Otser Hayunim number Mem Zayin. And it's on page, if you look at the top right, page Samach Vav. And in his first paragraph, he tells you that this sugya that we're learning really extends over three black Gemara, from Mem Gimel all the way to Mem Hay. And the question is, at what point is there a halos hefker? Is hefker immediate after he was mafkered, he declared it hefker? Or is hefker something that will be chal later on, at a later moment, and according to Yossi in the at the moment that someone else is zochin. Now, he has a section here called Makar HaHalacha, which you'll see on the bottom right of this page. And it goes all the way over to Samach Zion at the end of the right. Right column. And he starts in this section of Makar HaLacha, by summarizing in the paragraph that starts with Mishnah Nechleku, what we saw in the Gemara, and then he writes, V'nechleku ha'amoraim v'bir shitas Rabbi Yossi. So he starts with Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan, who says that even if the Madir places the Muslim on a, a boulder, and he declares it Hefker, the mudar is not allowed to pick it up and enjoy the benefit of that object. Says Rabbi Yochanan, why? Taimo mishum desover ein ha hefker yotze mishuso ad sheyovo l'shus zoche. So it remains in your rishus until someone else picks it up. Vagederhu, where do we find in general that you could be makna something, but the Kenyan is only chal when someone else is pone, so you need Makna and Kona, that's Matona. She'en chal hafkos ha'bailus shal ha'mafkir el mikoch she'nichnas u'shus ha'zoche. Just like in Matona, the object doesn't leave the rishus of the bailim until the zoche, the makabal Matona, makes a kinyan on it. So too, hefkir cannot be chal and remove your bailus, according to Rabbi Yossi, until someone else is zoche in it. So that's the equation between Hefker and Maton. Kodem Lachain, before someone else makes a Kenyan. Lopoka Kocha Bailushala Mafkir. It doesn't leave the ownership of the Mafkir. Chachomim, on the other hand, hold that Hefker is Nigmar Miyad. Yotzim Rishusu Poka Bailusu Tekef Mishef Kiro. Once he does the Maisa Hefker, it immediately leaves his Rishus, and anyone could be Zochin it from Hefker. 
ubiru rishonim shel Rabbi Yochanan Yochanan mafkil lachzer bo ad shiagili de azocha. Just like in the case of matana, until someone is makabel the matana, and he makes a kinyan, the bal hamatana could be choser, but so too, by analogy, in the case of hefkil or Rabbi Yochanan, if a person decides after he was mafkirid that he doesn't want it to be hefker and no one else was zocha in it, then he could completely reverse and void his hefker. And no one else subsequently could be zochen. Ubipshuto, taimo, mishum, de nechshav shachalosa hefker, lo nigmar adayin, ad sheyovali de hazochabo. So at this point in time, again, we'll see later on that he offers another interpretation, but now he's saying that it's not really hefker. The hefker is not nigmar. It's, 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 it's only in a, like in a fledgling state, in a potential state. But it only becomes hefker when the zoche acquires ownership on that object. Umemela, and therefore, since it's not really hefker yet, mo'ila chazara kodem achalos, he can be choser, but now, in the case of Madir and Mudar, the fact that the Madir allows the Mudar to pick up this Mazon and acquire it from the Sela, that in a sense is a mice of Mahana. Why is the Madir being Mahana the Mudar? Because he is not being Choser, but the fact that he decides to allow the Mudar to be Zoha without exercising his rights to be Choser, that itself is a Hanoa. And the Yushalmi seems to assume like Rabbi Yochanan, Tani, Rabbi Meir Omer Kevin Shon the Mafke Yotza Hadov and Shuso, Rabbi Yossi Omer Ein Hefke Yotze Mitachasi de Bailim, Ela Bidomel. Now we have to see what the word Domel means, but there's another Girsa that you'll see here in number Gimel on the bottom, Bizachia. Zachia means when someone else is Zocha. So the language of the Yushalmi is quite clear. That the hefker is not chal according to Rabbi Yossi until someone is zocha. Hifker sadeu, if he was mafker is sada, is tani tani choserbo. According to one opinion, which would reflect the sheet of Rabbi Yossi, he could be choserbo. For is tani tani eno choserbo, and that lechor would be the sheet of the chachamim, because we said according to chachamim immediately. Following the Maisa Hefker, it's completely Hefker. It's no no longer in his Rishus. He can't be Choserbo. It's already Hefker. It's not his. Okay. Now, I just want to fast forward for a moment to Shitas Reish Lakish, which you'll see on the next page, Samach Zion, the last paragraph. Hatam Shiyocho Lachserbo. Even Reish Lakish agrees that according to Rabbi Yossi, he could be Choserbo, but not because of a Doraisa Halacha, but rather because of Xeris Chachamim Mishum Harama. What is Harama? Harama means when a person on the outside, he camouflages as if he's being mafkir, when really on the inside, in terms of what he really wants, he has no interest whatsoever in being mafkir. He's only doing it in order to circumvent the laws of, of Neder and the Iser of Mudar Anah. So the Gemara tells us a whole story about Matnas Ben Beis Chorin. And the Gemara says that he wasn't really serious about his Hefker. And he only did it for the sake of Harama in order to try to circumvent the law of Iser Neder. So therefore, Gazru, the Chacham made a Gzera, and they said, you know what? We're going to allow you to be choserbo. And then we'll see what's going to happen. Are you going to wait patiently on the sidelines, passively, and allow someone to be zochabo? And then at that point, that person is zochabo. And we know that you were serious and you had a full gemir stas to be mafkir your bailus. O sheyizkebo ha mafkir atzmo. According to Ishlakish, the very moment that the Mafkir himself is Zochabo, is Donim Miyad Donim Oso Kimisha Lochal Meola. What does Lochal Meola mean? The Hefko is not Chal. 
So what he's basically doing is, is Yochel Lachzarbo. Lachzarbo means that there was never a Chalos Hefke. And that's why the Gemara assumes that there would be no tour of Trumas and Maestras in that case. It could very well be that theoretically, in abstract terms, Rabbi Yossi would also agree that Hefker is Chal immediately, like the Chachamim, in a situation where there's no Chashash Haram. Okay. Now, what I wanted to show you here is Tam HaLoch. In this paragraph called Tam HaLoch, this section, he wants to analyze this concept of Rabbi Yossi. Why is Rabbi Yossi so inhibited, so hesitant to accept the Chachamim that a person could be mafkir something and immediately becomes hefki? After all, there are many, many precedents in the Torah for Hafkas Bailus. The concept of Hafkas Bailus is rooted in many, many different halachas. And you'll see a paragraph called Umatsinu. You have this? Just if you could let me know, you know, I just want to know if you have. Yep. You have it, Umatsinu? Mm -hmm. That's on the bottom right of page Samat Zion. Did it come through? Yep. yep. Yeah. You have it, Adam? You look a little perplexed. I don't know. What? Well, maybe you don't have a phone. I don't know. I, I think I have a phone. I'm reading the Lord nicely. It's okay, good. <laughs> so look at the number of cases where there is hefke. Okay, take a look. Number one, peros shviyas. On the seventh year, the peros are hefke. Unless you rely on het mechira, which I'm not going to comment on. Because in the Friday, I have to close my mouth. Number two, then you have what's called yev. I don't think you can just see that half the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> All right. Let's just leave it at like this. We have to travel to Beitar to buy our fruits and vegetables. Uh, eventually, that'll change, but it'll take a while. Anyway, so what's... During the Rav Shachar said, like in the last year or two, that somebody told him that the Rav Soloveitchik supported the Hatham Makira. Uh, and so Rav Shachar said, well, what do you, what do you mean? What do you, why do you say that he said that? Because it doesn't work for anything in, in risk, right? And the man said, my father made Aliyah in 1969. And he asked Rav Soloveitchik, and he said, I, I know that some Rabbanim say to eat the Hetzir Mechira, and some say don't, so what should I do? And he said, so Rav Soloveitchik asked them, are you careful every year to sell your comets, you know, uh, for Pesach? And the man said, yes, I go every year for Pesach, and I have the rabbi sell my comets. So you can sell lead. Yes, yes, you should eat the yeah. Hetzir So now we have Aveda and Yeish. Now this is very interesting. If you own an object and you lost the object and you gave up on finding it and you said, kiss you were misyaish, that's mafkir your bailus. Now it's interesting. You didn't do a maisa hefker. You didn't do a maisa akna. You didn't declare that it's it's not mine and you aren't mafkir. And yet it becomes hefker. So we see that in the Torah, there is such a thing as hafkar's bailus. Third case, avuda vimenemi kolonam. Right, this is what we've learned when we were in fourth grade. Of course, I didn't understand it in fourth grade. I still don't understand. I mean, he's, but he's anyway, making so, making so many assumptions and so many different lenses over here, calling all these things hefke. Well, let's let's leave out the word hefke. Why is he saying Yeosh, Yeosh, he, Yeosh. He's talking about afkas bailus, okay. right? He wants to say that the Torah itself has, in many different areas, the concept of afkas bailus without a kinyan. You didn't. You didn't make a Kenyan, you were misyash. You said, okay, I'm not going to find it. Where's the Kenyan here? And yet it's no longer yours. It's, oh. it, 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 it's ownerless. In All of these examples are just examples where someone else has been to take something. Who said that that's, that works through have cut? Meaning, no, the same but way if you someone else could take it, it means it's not yours. Why? Hef it's yours, then According it's to Yossi, that's exactly what Hefker is. Well, wait a second. You're a step ahead of me. What, what we're trying to do now, let me just explain the, the, the methodology. We want to show that the concept of terminating bilus, even without a Kenyan, is well precedented in many different areas of Allah. I can give you many examples where the Torah would say, it's no longer yours. Anyone could take it away from you. And you didn't, you didn't do anything actively. Now, the question is, can we jump 
one step beyond that and say that actively you could be mafked or something. That's what we're going to get to in a minute. But again, just within this limited uh, scope and perspective, we see that many occasions the Torah says it's no longer yours. And if somebody takes it, he's not violating these things. And, and, and you weren't, you you didn't even actively do a Misa Kenyan. Yeish, Yeish is not a Misa Kenyan. So if, I, if I'm a Yaish, and then by some fluke, I end up finding it. I'm the first one I find it, I pick it up. Would we say, let's say these are fruits and vegetables. Right. Is, there a, is there a poor meister here? Was it Hefker? I would assume not. I think all the Rabbi Yossi could write just as easily in all of these cases say, just because someone else took me in the same way as Hefker, it's yours until the other person picks it up. In all these cases, you can, you can, make, you can make the same argument. I'm just saying it's, it seems like he's making a lot of assumptions and setting up all these different cases, but fine, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that. All right. V'chein v'isuri ano, min Torah. let's say, for example, Chometz for Pesach, it's not yours. Uladach's mixas mishonim, nasu hefker, meni shalom. Okay, not everybody would agree that it's hefker, but everyone would agree that you're allowed to take it and your bilus is no longer viable. Right. What happens is you leave a corner of your field, right, and, and it's it's hefker la niyim. But like, makoros shechal ba din hefker. Now he's learning that it's not just a hafkas bailus, but it's really hefker. Shepoker shus bailim mimamono vieno shalo. So at this point, having established that there are many precedents halacha where the Torah says it's not yours and anyone can come and take it, let's put the machlokas between Rabbi Yossi and Chachamim into this perspective and see how we can understand this. He says, Achein yesh levar, ma'u makar hadin shemaisa hefker midas ha'odom po'el halos hefker. He's finishing off some exam the right side. Some of the the end of the right side. He says, for example, in all these other cases that we have, there's a reason why your bilus is, is mufka. It's an objective reality. It's it's an Aveda, and there was Yeish. It's Shvius, the seventh year. It's Matnas Aniyam. It's Isuri Hano. But, hello, Enkan Sibalaf, but in the case of Hefker, there's no reality here that would remove your bilus. In all the other cases, whether you like it or not, the Torah says that your bilus is removed. Do we know, do we have a precedent that you yourself, with no apparent reason, can remove your own bilus? And on a deeper level, I think what he's saying is that something is yours, it's always yours. For infinity, until you make a knuff, and you're mocking it by taking it out of your shus and bringing it into someone else's shus. So all these precedents really have no have no status as precedents. You know, you can't justify them as precedents because in all these cases, the Torah says in such a reality, your bilus is paka. But can you come along, therefore, and for no apparent reason, you know, it's not an Aveda and it's not Matnasaniam and it's not Shvias, and you want to remove your bilus without being mocked to someone else. Where's the source for that? And he quotes here a Yushalmi in Peah, very famous Yushalmi. Just I went with Rabbi Yilson, this Yushalmi. And the Yushalmi says that we derive Hefker from Shvius. Why? Because there's an extra word in the Pasuk. It says Unitashta. So the Yushalmi darshans that what is this Natisha? It's in addition to Shvius. Shvius is an Atisha against your will. The Torah, de, uh, that's called Afkata de Malka, the Torah says, we mafkia your bilus in Shvius. However, the Torah also adds unitashta. Unitashta is an active verb that tells you that you could be mafkir something. Umikach drosha zu lamdu, shetzarach shemaisa hefke ye bedomele Shvius. Right, and on Shvius it's Hefkel Akol. So this enters into a famous Machlok Space Silbe where you can be Mafkir only for a certain 
a group, a certain pop, uh, you know, a specific part of the population. This is against Rabbi Yossi. Just like Shvius is immediately Chal, so too you have the Koach of Unitashta to be Mafkir something, be Mafkir your Bailus, and immediately it's out of your possession. And then it's Kola Kodim Socha. You can't, you can't nudge out, you know, you can't push out anyone else. And you can't re- reverse or rescind your hefker because it's already mufka. Your bilus is mufka, just like in the case of shvius. For Rabbi Yossi Cholek, says the Chasam Sofer, Shalola made them shvius. It's not valid to set up an analogy from shvius. Again, what he does with the extra word Natasha, we have to know. But putting that on the side, just conceptually, shvius is something which the Torah imposes upon you and actively removes your bilis on something, but that you can create by a half cost bilis on your own without a Kenyan, says Rabbi Yossi, that's not so. Because it's yours, and it remains yours, until you take it out of your Rishus by giving it to someone else. Can there be Hefker? Well, says Rabbi Yossi, you can't derive anything from Shvius, because Shvius, again, is imposed by the Torah as I've caused by us, whether you like it or not. Now you, from your own initiative, make a decision that you want to be mafkiya your bilis. I declare that my bilis is completely null and void. It's terminated. How do you terminate your bilis? It's always yours. It remains yours until you're makne and you aren't makne. Vitzarech bi or mayanu chachomim al chiluk zeh. How could the chachomim establish an, an analogy between Shvius and Hefker when there's an obvious distinction. The Torah is mafkia, your bilis and Shvius. You want to now be mafkia, your bilis and remove your ownership. How can you prove anything from Shvius? The Torah took it out of your shus. Now you want to take it out of your shus? It's yours. Be makne to somebody else. <coughs> and he says, be pashtus yesh lomar, the Chacham say the following. We see that there's something called, the Torah recognizes a chalos of course, bilus. Who picked it up? In Shvius, who picked it up? Nobody. We're waiting for the Aniyim or whoever comes to pick it up. And yet, your bilus is completely gone. So there is such a thing as a chalos of course, bilus. I admit, I grant you, it was the Torah that was mafki your bilus. But at the end of the day, this gives us a precedent, you know, peg to hang our hat on, that there is such a thing as Afkaz Bailus, even though no one else was Zoch in it. You can terminate your Bailus, and therefore you can be Mafkir. What difference does it make whether the Torah did it, or you the Bailam did it? If the Torah does it, then you can do it. That's the Sheet of Does anybody, it sounds like we're considering that, okay, in the sixth year I owned it and then it falls into and now I don't own it anymore. Is there a way of looking at it where my bilus never included Shnat Shmita in the first place? That I couldn't there's it's not possible to own it, not subject to you know what you're reminding me of? There's a discussion at the beginning of Mesectic Subis about <laughs> what's called Gulas Hasade. Toch Yud Beis Chodesh, or Yovel. So when I sold you my karka, did I sell it to you forever? And then Yovel comes and undo, you know, undoes the Kenyan, or the Kenyan Lechatchil from the get-go was Never up included. to, but not beyond Yovel, or maybe in terms, I don't know exactly how it works in Shemitah, but uh, there are similar things. Now, I would like to suggest something here, and I say it with a little bit of trepidation, but maybe the machlokas here between Rabbi Yossi and the Chachamim is not about the gap between Shvius and Hefker, but maybe it's a machlokas about what exactly Hefker is. Meaning, the Chachamim learned from Shvius 
that there's something called Hefker. And Hefker is no less of a bylus than private ownership. And with Shvius, we have something called a Rishus of Hefker. There's an entity called Hefker. So Hefker is not just a siluk of, of the Isuk Zela, allowing anyone to be Zoch in it, but Hefker is, is a positive bilus. Like, for example, again, it's not a good analogy. Don't, don't take me literally here, but you have something called Hegdish. I could be Magdish something, and it belongs to Hegdish. Obviously, Hegdish is a different kind of bilus. Well, let's say, for example, a Sefer Torah. Sefer Torah is considered a bilus. The bilus of the city of the Bnei Ha'ir, right? The whole suit at the end of Babasra, that if, let's say, you want to testify about someone who, again, someone who stole the Sefer Torah, so you have to remove your ownership from the, from the Sefer Torah. So the Sefer Torah is owned by the entire city. So we see that there's something called ownership that goes beyond private ownership. Shutfus is private ownership. But we are both like one entity owning the object. But there's something where, in a sense, no one owns the object. Or maybe it's not that no one owns the object, but everyone owns the object. And that's called Hefke. Similar chilek is by uh, Shoshal Hefke. Right? The question is that Shoshal Hefke, in theory, Mr. Hefke owes you money, but Lamaisi he can't give it to you. Huh. Um, or is it that, no, there's no bylaws. So there's no, no bylaws at all. That's right. what I'm wondering. Maybe the Chachamim saw in Shviz a real breakthrough. And they said, what are you telling me? You can't be mafke or something. Why? Because you didn't you didn't give a hakna. You aren't you you didn't implement a hakna. Maybe the Chacham hold that Hefker is Akna. When I'm mafke or something, I'm being mafke something to Hefker. Hefker is not the absence of ownership, but it's an existing entity of ownership. There's something called Hefker. For example, the famous Sugim Bab Metziah of Zochen Liodim Shlob Bafanov, except for Bumakum Shechav Lacherim. So the Gemara says that if I want to pick up Hefker on your behalf through Zochen Liodim Shlob Bafanov, it doesn't work. It's it's not operative. Why? Because it's chav lacherim. Chav lacherim. What kind of chav lacherim? It's hefker. Nobody owns it. Apparently, the Gemara is assuming that everyone has something in that hefker. So if you go ahead and exclude other people, that's called chav lacherim. You want to be zolcha for yourself. That's one thing. But you want to be zolcha for someone else. And then the Gemara goes through Migu, Migu, and so on and so on. But without the Migu, the Gemara has a serious problem that I can't be Zoch and Hefker on your behalf because it's the exclusion of somebody else. Well, if that other person doesn't have any Zchus, why is that called Chav Lacherim? So he must have some Zchuyos, some monetary rights in the Hefker. So Hefker is not the absence of monetary rights. It's not like, you know, we think of a a boulder, you know, what's it called, that fell down from heaven, you know, and uh, landed on earth. But rather, Hefker means it enters into the Rishos of Hefker. And if that be the case, what the Chacham is saying is that what we're going to derive from Shvius is that there's something called Hefker. And once there's something called Hefker, you could be makna your object to Hefker. Rabbi Yossi thinks, no, Shvius is not in any way indicative of an entity called Hefke, which belongs to Hefke, like, like Hegdish. But rather, Shvius just tells you that any Oni, or any Asher for that matter, could come into your field and take away your produce. But it doesn't prove anything about Hefke. And therefore, if Hefke is not an entity, then you need Akna, because as we said before, Rabbi Yossi assumes that until you take it out of your Rishus, it still remains yours. It's in your shows. Where was the Akna? But if we say that Hefker is an entity, then you could be mocked as something to Hefker. And there's such a thing as a phantom Hefker who's Zohar 
and creates a bilus called Hefker. Who is the bilum on Hefker? Everyone is a bilum on Hefker. It's not the absence of bilus, but it's the existence of a positive bilus, and everyone has a schus in Hefker. So you are magnet to Hefke. Now, the reason why he doesn't even have such a possibility is I think because he's looking for a Misa Kenyan. Now, there's something called Mili, Diburin. You can make a declaration. I can stand here from now until doomsday and say that this table is yours. And it's not Chal. We need a Misa Kenyan. So even if I were to grant you that there's such a thing called Hefker as an entity, as a, as a common bilus, but where's the Misa Kenyan? What did I do? Did I give it over to you? Who's the you over here? Who made the Kenyan? Where was the transaction? All I did was I declared that it's Hefker. This is what you were talking about before. Right? It didn't go into any other, other person's resource. No one was open it. Therefore, there's nothing. Don't call it Hefker. Right? So the best you can say about Hefker is that somebody else could come and be Zochen. Oh, and this is a more more of the chiddush here. She yesh din hefker lematzav zeh. Even Rabbi Yossi holds there is such a middle category, like it's a a shlav of hefker, and it is hefker. Daksha eno kmo shvitz. Right. He doesn't really clarify. I think it's a point according to Sh- the hefker of Shvis is a is an instantaneous, one time, um, you know, transfer into rishus of hefker. While according to Yossi, we have a it's a it's a whole in between uh, time period. Right, but he doesn't clarify what that in between is. That's why I wanted to learn with you, Page. Samach Tes, which is, I think, the last page that you have. Am I correct? I think deleted form. He calls it here. It's, he calls yeah. it a Messinas Rishos L'Zchil. That's correct. Favorite. So then it's not really Hefker. Well, it's, it's just, I'm that, just that's allowing def- you to be that, Zoka. That's the definition of Hefker. But Hefker doesn't mean... That's that. a, I think that's the first side of this Hakira. Look, look up to, before the word O, right? He says that what is Hefker... He says, Eno Klum. Do you see that language? Eno Klum on the second line? Mm-hmm. Eno Klum, meaning it's not really Hefker. All it is is this Nesinus Rishos. He's almost suggesting that according to Rabbi there's no such thing as Hefker. There's no time period of Hefker. Right. right. That's, that's the first thing. The second one is there is Hefker. Oh, so now I'd like, like to evolve. clarify what exactly is that extra step in the second side of his Hakira that it's Hefker. You know, it's, in the first side, he said, I gave you Rishos to be Zok, but it's still mine. Now he's saying, no, it's Hefker, according to Rabbi Yosef. Well, what does he mean here? What is that Hefker? He, he leaves it like up in the air. So that's why I thought that maybe it would be make it would it would be clarified if we take a look at the Shari Yosha of Rabbi Shimon Shka. He says, the first Sad in the Hakira, I don't like. So the Devreim, according to those. Achronim, maybe even Rishonim, Nimsa Shel Rabbi Yossi Lochal Klum Behefke. So that's the first side. It's just the Sinas Rishos that allows you to be Zoha, but it's not Hefke. Elo, Reya. So that's the first side. Lefizet Tamua. Why does Rabbi Shimon Shkab have some sort of like allergic reaction to that definition? And then we have to see the other side. Even according to Rabbi Yossi, she have kif kumatano. Titochen zechia shall bailin b'tor zochem in a hefke. Right, the Gemara goes back and forth. Rabbi Yochan and Rish Lakish. If a person wakes up the next morning after he was mafkir the night before, and he and he you know harvests his crop, 
is that considered Zochim min a hefker? Is he potter? Is he potter min hamasros? And Reish Lakish says that he should be chayiv in maser, and Reish Yochanan says he's potter min hamasr. But Afkimina sheptur mi masros lushita saran. But lo ain't kind of shores lizkos matona mirshus atzmo shadaim rishuso. How can you tell me that this is Hefker if you're arguing that all he did was he gave Rishus to someone else to be Zohar, but he took it for himself? I mean, there's a difference in being Choserbo and being Kognet, again, from Hefker, the Bible. But he's saying that if there's no such thing as Hefker, Quintar Biosi, and it really never left your Rishus, it's be, just a Matana. Then, exactly, then there would be no difference. I mean, there has to be a difference between those two. Correct. That's what Shimon's arguing. So you can't say that. Rabbi Yossi denies the whole concept of Hefker. According to Rabbi Yochanan, the halacha is that if he himself, the Bailam is Zoha, he's part of a So there must be a positive state of Hefker in between. It's not just that he says, makes declaration, anyone who takes it, you know, Tavola Bracha, and there's no Gzela here. It's got to be a positive Hefker. That's Rabbi Yochanan on Rabbi Yossi, right? Correct. That's Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yossi, and now it's Rabbi Shimon Shkup in Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yossi, that the reason why you put him in Hamas is because you yourself, the Bailam, are being Zochem and Hefke. It's not a Chazara in which nothing happened. You know, you gave Rishos and nobody took you up on the offer. No. It's Hefke. If it's not Hefke, then how could it be put him in Hamas? That's Rabbi Shimon Shkup. Ulafichach in the next paragraph. Right, that's at the end of the paragraph. He says, "Behechrek shechal kan rega echad shel hefker." So when someone else is being zolche, he's being zolchem in a hefker. But again, then we're gonna have a problem with the darim. You know, we're in a real bind over here because from the darim we get the impression that nothing happened until somebody else was zolche. In this case, the mudar, it never left the shus of the violent. So there is no entity called hefker. Otherwise, if it was Hefkin, then Rabbi Yossi would agree to the Rabbanon that what? That this is a great method of circumventing the Eastern Nether. L'fich ha'cholik Rabbi Shimon Shkaf al Darkom. This is the Koach HaTorah of Rabbi Shimon Shkaf. Ubir shachilik ha'rishon shenok to achronim shu askoma that he just agreed that anyone can take it. Ain't it rak askama unesinas rishus shichola lisbata bechol rega im yachzervo el achelik ze hu shlav bifnei atzmo bedin ha-hefke. I mean, so far he's just regurgitating what we know. and He's just changing the language. Right? He hasn't really given anything of substance. He's just saying it's already chal, there's already some state of hefker. It's not just that anyone could come and take it. But he says chalos hefker mischalik l'shnei chalokin. Okay, now we're getting into substance. Chalik harishon shenikbas haskoma shachifetz mutul chal odem b'zachir af shalom idaitam. So I think the key word here is nikba. Do you see the word nik, nikbas? I, I think in in uh, in my language it would be chalos. Like there's a, a a certain chalos here. It's not just that he's he's allowing anyone to come in and take it, but there's a kvius. There's some sort of chalos. Af shalomi daito. The kaviyochel on the top left here nisyached hamamon. Okay, so I wanted to say this Yachin Amama means it enters into some sort of entity called Hefker. Left Shorashakal Odom Yizkaba. It's kind of like a permanent Asmachna. Again, it's not permanent because it could be Choserbo, but in the in the in the meantime, it's a full-fledged Asmachna. And the Dasmachna generates a stage of Hefker, stage number one of Hefker. The ain't Sarch Das Bailum Lahaskim Likinyono. My worst enemy comes along to be Zohar after I was Mafki. That's fine. If he gets there first, before I was Choserbo, 
he could be conid. Why? Because there's some sort of chalushem askama, which I would call a das makna. And the das makna is like written in stone. It's engraved in stone. The chalik sheni, what's the ultimate kinyan? That's when there's a das kona. In addition to das makna, there's a das kona. But das makna itself is a kind of hefke, which I thought means that he's being mafkered to hefke. Okay, afkata de malka is at the end of the train ride, at the final station. It's completely out of your issue, so you can't be choser. In a Kenyan, not Shvius, we have a first stage, a first stage that, that is kovea, a das mak. And if somebody comes along and takes it, he could be zocha through the das mak, through the das kon. And you can't do anything to stop. At stage number two, then it enters into the Rishus of the Kona when there's a Das Kona and your Pilus is Puck. So what does Rav Shimon want to gain from this? He wants to explain two different dinim according to Rav Yosef. Din number one is Madir and Nodin. And since at stage number one, even though through his Hefker was Kovea the Das Machne, but nevertheless, he still could be Choserba. And therefore, if the Mudr Hana is Zochenit, he gains Hana from the Madir who could have exercised his right to be Choser and he was not. But now he wants to gain something else. Why would there be a Ptur Hefke? Excuse me, a Ptur Masa? And the answer is because there was already a Chalos Kvius of Das Machna. And the Das Machta gives it over to Hefke. And in that sense, there's a Ptur Masa. The Chidesh Rab Shimon. What, what would be the Makkor for that? Because you only have, as if the Makkor is from like Shemitah, things of that sort, you only have a Makkor for Shlav Bet. Right. Where's your Makkor for Shlav Al? Correct. And that's going to have to be Misvara. The Svara is that if the Torah says there's something called Afkos Bailus, then I. Me daiti can decide to be mafkia my bilus. And I do it in two stages. At stage number one, I'm kovea my das machna. At stage number two, there's a das kona. Let's just see if we can fit in one more paragraph. The chide shom agon rab shimin Excuse me. My wife always complains that I yell and scream. I shouldn't do it because it kills my voice. He says, "Shes yachadus zu shenikba abachefetz shu mutul chol adam who shinui bedine haikuv shein tzarich das l'schias achirim." Well, what was chal through this kviyus that you no longer need a das machne because you already have a das machne. And that das machna for the time being is engraved in stone. And therefore somebody else could be Zoha, Shalomi Daito, Valkorcha. The Gam Lirabiosi Uka. Even Rabiosi agrees that there is that first stage of Hefker, which the Das Machna is how in such a way that someone now by giving his das kone, could cut off the machna, even against the will of the machna. Vizel chalos, oh, now he used the word chalos. Before he's using the word nikba. Heter zechia, kfishi yisbar kach, la'alon, begidre yeyush. So he says that yeyush is also like Rabbi Yossi's hefker, and in both cases, there's no complete hafkaz bailus, but what we have is a das machna that's set in stone, and that's called the chalos hefke, and that's enough to pat you from, from mass, but it's not enough to circumvent the din of muder hanot. The... But the big question is, where's the ma'isa kinyan? You see, das machna without a ma'isa kinyan is a very strange entity. 
you know, the, the, the natural intuition of a person rejects the idea of a das machne that's kovea when there's no mice Kenyan. And that's why I just want to finish up here. He writes, See, only Achronim are bothered. How can you be Kovea a Das Machta without a Maisa Kenyan? He made a verbal declaration. It must be that according to Rav Yossi, there's no such entity as Hefka. Says Rav Shemesh no, there is a Maisa Kenyan. Where's the Maisa Kenyan? And he says Adam Poel Bedibu. This Reb Shimon. He says that Lo Chaser Maisa Kinyan Behefker Lefi Shaaf She Yeshak Dibur Mikomakom Nia Mikoach Adibur. Okay, the next word I don't understand. His Nagus Bechefes. I don't know. That's already Reb Shimon. Dick. You know, that's already his language. But he says, Zerah Maisa Kinyan Shalom. And I, I think that what Rabbi Yossi is saying here, according to Rabbi Shimon, is a, what we call, Hein Hein Advarma Niknim Ba Mira. You familiar with that phrase? It makes sense. Like, for example, you could be Magdish something through a mirror and it leaves your bilis. Or, for example, if the Chassan and the Kala make an agreement, the parents come and they say, well, I'll give this and I'll give this. as Hein Hein Advarma Niknim Ba Mira. There are cases where a mirror itself operates as a Maisa Kenyan. So if you would ask me, where is the source from which this Machlok is the Achronim and Rav Shimon evolves? Why did the Achronim say the Koyit Rav Yossi? There is no such thing as a middle stage of Hefke. Whereas Rav Shimon says there is a Chalos Hefke. It's basically, it can be boiled down to the question is whether Dibur could be a Maisa Kenyan. All the Achronim understood that Dibur is not a Maisa Kenyan. So how can you tell me that you effectuated some sort of das machna in which somebody else could be zochen it against your will with Adam Isaacinian? It's impossible. And Rav Shimon, from his part, understands that the Deber itself could function as a Isaacinian. Okay, then we'll stop here. There's so much here. I mean, we... It shouldn't be so difficult to come with a solution to that because... Shrikas Chacham is that it goes into Rishos. Have a great day. Shrikas Chacham is that it goes into Rishos. No one's bothered about where's the Maisi Kinyin. Yeah, right. And we're almost like creating a new issue for Rabbi Yossi when trying to basically minimize the gap between Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yossi. No one's bothered about Rabbi Yossi. We don't need Maisi Kinyin. That makes it into Rishos. You don't need Maisi Kinyin. Why, why is that so Why is that so difficult? I mean, why is it only, sorry, why is it only difficult with the Shrikas Chacham? The Shrikas have a sheet of Shmita. You know, there is such a thing that I could set it up that the Torah is not key of the Bible. Okay, then.